Welcome to SQL Server 2008 Data Mining and Power Pivot Demo 1 of 3. We're going to be using SQL Server 2008 with the Excel 2010 and the 32 bit add on for Power Pivot and for Data Mining. Notice the Power Pivot and Data Mining tabs are on my sheet. I'm going to go first here to the Power Pivot window and go through the process of choosing the original source data from the local hosted SQL Server database. I will be using the AdventureWorks database and I will be importing tables which are relationally connected. And you'll notice through this process I am going to be picking tables that have a relational connection since that is where you will find the most leverage in using the Power Pivot technology. You can go through this video perhaps pausing it to see specifically what tables I'm selecting. I believe going forward more people will be using the Power Pivot technology to store relational data rather than putting the data into a regular Excel worksheet. I did do this presentation at SQL Saturday Atlanta April 2010. You will also find the final Excel workbook available on my website marktab.net so you can download it from the Microsoft presentations area. You can see how many rows are being imported from SQL Server into Power Pivot. The largest fact table there has 60,000 rows. And at the end you can see the names that Excel has added to the Power Pivot tabs. They represent the names of the original tables. Or you can also change them if you want to change them here. Same thing with the column headers. You could change the column headers. I'll put click switch to workbook showing you that the workbook area is separate and different from the Power Pivot area. Again going back and forth showing the different sheets available for analysis. And then I'm going to go into saving. I will mention that saving is an important step in this technology. I did use the beta versions for these demos. However, the final versions of Power Pivot and Excel 2010 are now available and can be acquired. The goal of this first analysis will be to analyze resellers. And you'll see a technique in this demo that I generally recommend for data mining, namely to use multiple algorithms to tackle the same business problem. Data mining does differ from machine learning because machine learning typically uh, reflects on the algorithms and, and their power, but data mining reflects on business problems. And so we should be thinking about what are the business objectives rather than being unwilling to look at multiple algorithms. To move from Power Pivot to data mining, it's important to first generate a flattened pivot table. This pivot table window is similar to technology that you've already seen in Excel if you've been using it to connect to analysis services. And using this pivot table, I can ac access the Power Pivot structure using these selection boxes. Again, you, can, you may need to pause or go back on this video if you would like to replicate my results. Once I have the, the, the values as I want them, I selected Control A, which selects the entire area, and then I'm going to paste just the values into a new worksheet deleting the first row of redundant headers and then formatting the result as a table. By formatting the result as a table we're now preparing the data for using data mining and you'll notice now the analyze tab appears at the top just to the right of data mining. You can see some of the areas there. First one being analyze key influencers and of course I'm going to save at that point. The data mining add-in used for this demo 
is the 32-bit add-on which was written for Office 2007 and I am using it for Office 2010. I noticed sometimes it would not load in my experience so you may have to turn that add-in on and at some point you can expect to see perhaps a 32-bit and maybe a 64-bit add-on available at some time in the future. Now moving on to the data mining step. Notice I'm on the Analyze tab. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to first highlight exceptions using the entire table and choosing four of the five columns. Run it. Highlight exceptions will determine numbers that are exceptional, either exceptionally high or exceptionally low. I saw another data mining video which classified these exceptions as either good or bad. However, scientifically, it is not applying a judgment statement and we should only use the term, the relative terms high or low. We may apply the word good or bad based on a value judgment, based on whether a high or a low value might be good or bad given the context. But just the algorithm itself does not apply a value judgment. Once the highlight exceptions portion is done, then I'm going to go back to the original spreadsheet and we'll do the second task and that is to detect categories. In Detect Categories, in this case, I'm going to only use the last three columns because those are the ones that provide the most information. In this case, I'm also going to force the number of categories to be five. It's going to pick the five best categories based on those last three columns, which also have the most data. What an analyst could do as a next step is then to look at the exceptions by category and that's a result that I'm going to save. Again, this workbook is available at marktab.net. You can download it from the Microsoft Presentations area and it does illustrate an important point that I like to communicate in data mining and that is to use the entire toolbox and even play with combinations. In this case you can play with combinations of exceptions and also different numbers of categories. This slide also summarizes the technology. And finally, this is demo one of three data mining and power pivot.